You're listening to Desync Nerds, a Nintendo Switch podcast. This is episode 29, airing on Monday, the 23rd of April. This episode is brought to be by, be by my ability not to speak but to wake up in the mornings and the letter three. We're your hosts. I'm Colin, and he's Devin, bringing you all the latest news and hot topics from around the internet. This week, we have Sonic Mania Plus news, leaks rather, Dark Souls delayed again, or I mean for the first time, I think. And of course, Labo stuff. But first, Devin, Weekend Gaming. Oh my God, save me. I can't talk. Uh, I can't save you because I have nothing to say because I've played no games because it's midterms already. You have failed me. Midterms belong in week three. What about you? What These have you... trimesters are so brutal. It's just always midterms. Like every other week is a midterm for you. That's basically life. One at three, one at five, one at seven, and then again at ten. I love the school <laughs> system here. Anyway, moving on. Weird. Uh. I wish I had an excuse like that, but I don't. I also didn't play games. I've just been busy doing, you know, adult things. Adult uh, things. Onto the news. You like picking up a new sport, adult things. That's a good one. I approve. All right. First thing on the docket Dark Souls for the Switch got delayed. Frowny face. Definitely frowny face. Yeah. So, not even like a concrete delay either. It's just to some unspecified date, which is, I always love that so much. It's just. Uh, so yeah, it was originally going to be released on the 25th, and now it is who knows when. They're also delaying the Amiibo, which, go figure, and then the, there's still going to be a network test, but it's going to get pushed back to be near the official release. And I thought... Which is whenever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because who makes dates up. I thought we had already seen this playable. Is that not the case? I think it was at PAX East. Yeah, it was at PAX East, yep. And yet it's so was delayed. Wolfenstein too, as well, actually. Yeah. Uh, are you, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Are you, are you, I, I have it on my Amazon. My Amazon now shows it in like December, I think. December yeah. 28th. My yeah. Wolfenstein shows December 31st. So, you know. It's what they they'll do. come out when they come out. That's fair, yeah. Just kind of let it go. Anyway, moving along. Game Freak trademarked Ultra Shiny. And Nintendo confirmed the new Pokemon games will be new generation, not reboots. So, uh, this is a womp womp for me. I I don't... How do you feel about it? Did you you actually wanted like a new red blue? Is yeah, I want I want leaf green fire red already, again. Yeah, I was just gonna say they already did that though. Yeah, but I want it on the new console. I want I want the new like giant fancy step forward to actually still be retro, so that I still feel safe and it's not new and scary. You mean you want the super up res of leaf green? Is that what you want? That's that's not funny. <laughs> I mean, I really don't care what they do. They can remake new new generation up res. I don't care. I'll buy whatever it is. But uh, I'm just trying not to get too excited. I'm trying to temper my expectations. I'm I'm pretty sure th- they're gonna give me a fates, and I'm just <laughs> holding out for a, a soul silver instead. Even an X and Y. Like do something new but good. X and Y was really good. But yeah, actually, I'm actually. I'm gonna get two fates. I'm going to get Fates from Fire Emblem again, and I'm going to get Fates from friggin' Game Freak. I just know it. You'd be okay with an up 3DS game? Really? I would be, yeah, totally. I'd be disappointed, but I'm still going to buy it. I mean... Because I'm dumb. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I'm going to oh, buy okay. it, too. You're... Oh, I didn't realize... I didn't realize if it was an up you wouldn't buy it. No, I'd still buy it. It's just I would be pissed, and I would complain <laughs> about it. Uh, and endlessly. Be angry all the way to GameStop or yeah. Amazon or whatever? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And yeah, I, I would come on this show, me too. and I'll whine about it, and that's just that's just how I respond to games that make me sad. Fair. But speaking of games anyway. that don't make me sad, uh, yeah, let's move along. Sonic Mania Plus accidentally leaked to some users. I was not one of those users. I'm so sorry. It was uh, Nintendo UK. No, it was PS PlayStation UK people specifically. And you had to, like, manually go pull it up. So if you went into the store during the, like, three hours it was available, you would see that you had a Sonic Mania update and you could have grabbed it then. But again, in the UK, on the PlayStation, so you didn't have a chance. Which, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that that is so comically amazing. Like, that's such a massive screw-up. And for that to happen just makes me so happy that, you know... Because I've worked in some some Mickey Mouse companies and... You know, it's not just it's not just the random startup I worked at. It's also, you know, Sega. <laughs> but anyway, in the patch notes for this, not patch notes, but you know what I mean, in the features that we saw, 
We got new transitions to all zones that lack them. All cutscenes are now skippable. There's a DLC menu added. Uh, the time limit can be turned off, which I like. They revamped all of the menus, and then there's a bunch of manner balance changes. Like, this boss takes two hits instead of three to move to phase two and stuff like that that I didn't actually care to read, so. Yeah, this is the thing. I kind of, I'm still, like, on the fence about this game. I still don't have it. And I don't know how. I mean, I... it's like the highest rated Sonic game in the last decade or some, something obscene like that. That's because I, I recommend it. It's the only Sonic but... game of the last decade to not Metacritic of 45. Is that what it was? Uh, I not... mean, that basically, that basically, yeah. Yeah. I'm being hyperbolic, but I'm not too far from mm. the truth, so. No, I mean, not at all. And that's kind of. <laughs> I don't the know. sad part now. Yeah. I just don't know how I feel about. As I was just complaining about, you know, I don't want it to just be a prettier version of the old game with Pokemon. I don't know that I particularly Okay, but care. Sonic is so... Like, like, Sonic has been trying. And the only time Sonic got it right is the first time a Sonic game ever came out. They're trying to, to not, you know, do the same old Pokemon thing again. So I'm telling you, listen. If you like Sonic Ages, if you like their virtual console, if you like the first and second ones... You will like this. It's that, but but a little bit better, a little bit more tweaked. It's the upres version of those. You yeah. should get it. Wine, wine. Let me just spend all your money for you. <laughs> I needed help with that. Uh, anyway. Let me help you some more. Let's move on. You ready to move on? Yeah. Big interview with Labo developers. Buy some Labo stuff. That's what the interview is about. Yeah, I mean, the more I keep reading this stuff, the more I kind of want to, and it's become a real problem. Like, I don't. Do it. I don't have eighty dollars budgeted for Lobo this month. I just don't, and so. But yeah, there was a big interview, and in it they said a lot of things. There's link in the links in the show notes. I'm trying to be better about show notes, so uh, that's there. Um, but just to go down through some of the things again, it is a big interview. This is it was very long, so I, I pared it down a lot. But there's still a lot here. Uh, so Lobo came about. The initial like product design came about because the Lobo director wanted to create something that didn't overlap with anything else. He just he wanted to be something completely unique. Are you, are you signifying the next? Uh, in the early design, they had a nose-picking prototype as a sort of proof of concept. And they put one Joy-Con in a box, and then you had to like maneuver that box to control a finger on screen that would then pick a nose. And it was just their sort of way of seeing you can use the IR camera to show you know, three-dimensional space movement and whatnot, the gyroscopes. Uh, they also said that their design and prototyping of the different games turned into a sort of social gathering that they enjoyed. They literally had what they called prototyping parties. And this is kind of where the idea that the creation and the exploration and the, the building of it is what's fun. Uh, and then again, yeah, there's a lot in the interview about like the deep thinking of the design. And if you like game design stuff, it's super interesting. I think it's a little too deep for you know, the context of the podcast. But... It's all there, and again, if you, if you are at all care about game design or toy design or just, like, creating enjoyable experiences, it's, it's definitely worth a read. Um, they also... It's definitely not us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will never design a fun experience. I'm probably going to be working on bank software for the rest of my life. So, um, they also talk about the Joy-Cons, which they view as a bundle of sensors, because, I mean, as we've said, those things are, are technological pieces of magic. They just... They do a lot of stuff, and it's kind of crazy. And then, oh, just fun notes. Their first non-Nintendo non -Nintendo consumer test led to the director of Labo literally going to his hotel room and crying. And then just widespread panic in the hardware design. Because people just didn't, they didn't understand it. They didn't get how to build it. They didn't get how to play with it. They didn't understand anything. And basically, they were ready to release, and their, their consumer tests are just going... Terribly, and I thought that was amazing. That it's the Wii U all over again. <laughs> except, <laughs> except this time they stopped and said, "Wait, no, we can fix this. There's a solution here." And they went back to the drawing board. They said, "It's for kids, you idiots. Figure this out." <laughs> yeah, I mean, when when you bring in a bunch of school children and the school children can't figure out how to build your toy that is aimed at you know four to twelve yeah. year olds, like this is a problem. Uh, and then so after that, they brought in more than 100 school-aged children, like elementary school kids, to just run tests on the stuff. Uh, in the initial press release that I read, they talk about how there's a room that just, it looks like a kindergarten space. There's just tables everywhere with arts and crafts crap everywhere. You know, there's fun photos on the posters on the wall and stuff. And it's just, 
It, it's very clearly meant for kids. So for the people, how that cool are... would that be? Like we're we're taking a field trip to Nintendo today. What? Oh, and we'll we'll get into a little bit. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, it's in there there at the bottom. You know, what? we're just gonna bring that up to the top here. So actually, UK schools have been talking to Nintendo about getting Labo into schools and like trying to get discounted school kits for it. And I mean, it's amazing. I think that's amazing. That's great. Nothing ever, nothing cool ever happened in my school. Literally nothing. Uh, I think the first thing that was kind of cool was like the robotic stuff, and that happened after we were really out of that age space. So. I did that at like a science camp one year because I'm a huge nerd, and that was actually a lot of fun. Exactly. See, that could have been you. You could be an engineer right now if, if you'd just been born four years. Oh later. no! Oh no! No. Have you have you asked me to add anything together? Hey, what's twenty percent on this tab? Uh, let me get my phone because I'm critically. I'm not going to say that word on air. Thank you. <laughs> Incapable of math. We'll, we'll go with that. Uh, but anyway, let's move along. Keeping in the Labo theme, Labo replacement parts are available now, and they are a lot less than we were uh, expecting. Yeah, I mean, speak for yourself. Uh, the so the whole robot kit takes fifty bucks to replace the whole thing. Okay. That one aside, less than I was expecting. The fifth, that fifty bucks is insane, but the other ones are reasonable. Yeah. Uh, so the variety kits cost six to twelve dollars for the full replacement kit. So you can like, if you break your the the Toycon, the RC cars, excuse me, are the one ex are the one exception to this where they're like two bucks. But like, if you ruin the house, the house house is like twelve dollars to replace. So, so that's a thing that you can order. And then. Alternatively, you can just download the plans and print them for yourselves, but that requires... Yeah, there's a lot going on there. You have to have... Presumably, you have to be able to print on corrugated cardboard. You have to have the perforations, or you have to manually cut it, which, if you've ever tried to exacto knife through cardboard, is a lot harder than it sounds. Like, yeah. We had to do that at work for a while, way back in the day, and it's just it's a nightmare to, to work with cardboard. Uh, I'm actually impressed that they did this as they did just because of how obnoxious it would have been to prototype and work through. And then in our final piece of Labo news, Bill Nye the science guy did some Labo. Yeah. And that was pretty amazing. Did you did you watch that commercial? It was so it was so like this dude is clearly too old to really understand what he's doing. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. I enjoyed it because I like Bill Nye and he's funny, but he was like I don't know, he just he clearly didn't get get it fully understand what was going on i mean i still don't fully get it and i'm 20 something so fair <laughs> uh but yeah it's pretty standard commercial fare uh, but as you mentioned earlier in the before the show bill nice a tall dude and he fit in the robot suit so he's six feet tall so you can google it yeah you can google it because we did um <laughs> So that's yeah. He impressive. looked like he was in it, and he looked like he was moving fine. The, of course, they only showed like a quick flash of it; like they didn't show him actually playing the game. So I don't know if there was like something something <laughs> catastrophically went wrong immediately, but he, it looked like he was in it. So that's a thing. If you were afraid of that, oh hey, we're not yeah. live. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Our one uh, one live fan will be very disappointed. All right, next thing on the docket to get away from Lava News finally. Dragon Quest XI, I almost said XI, is straddling the open world slash linear RPG line, and the creators intend to push it away from the open world side. Uh, you don't want an open world JRPG? I just, they don't... We keep getting open world, and they keep giving us, like, overly large maps with nothing in between, so you just, it's just a walking simulator. They're not, nobody's doing this open world stuff correctly, 100% correctly. So I, and I prefer linear style games anyway. Especially if it's going to be a JRPG. Yeah, I feel like JRPGs do the like that blend really well, where it's like you've got a big open space and you've got you, so you've got openness, but it's also constrained, and that combination I think is really well works out. Really Fifteen well. did that really well, really, really well. It looked like a giant world, but it was actually pretty linear with some side quests thrown in. Mm. Yeah, and that's that was kind of what they they talk about. Um, they say if you if if you have an open world and you want to add fishing, you have to spend a lot of effort to kind of make a fishing system that works over the whole thing. Whereas if you want to have just this one little subset of you know, for whatever reason in the quest you need to fish, you can have that that interesting little piece and then it move on and it doesn't it's not a thing and you don't have to worry about all of the interlocking pieces. And uh, they they do also say that in in traditional JRPG fashion there will be some side quests and optional content, optional dungeons and whatnot. So. 
I'm okay with this. This is actually kind of how I like my JRPGs too. I don't. Yeah, this sounds perfect. I don't really know how you do like a full level progression with open world other than doing like the Skyrim route where everybody levels with you, which I think kind of detracts from the game as a whole. I think that not being able to actually be powerful is kind of defeats the purpose. But... I mean, I, you could, I guess you could kind of do it like a Breath of the Wild style. Or it's like you don't really ever get more powerful. You just get less flimsy. But how do you do that in a JRPG? I don't shrines like tons of shrines. Just throw shrines everywhere. Shrines everywhere that make you marginally better. Yeah, because at that point you have to be able to go fight the end boss at at day one, and it's just kind of like quality of life improvements throughout the game. Which, I mean, again, I feel like that goes against the spirit of a JRPG. There's a reason I work in facilities and not game design. Fair enough. <laughs> for that matter, same. So, let's move on. All right, Disgaea 1 got confirmed for the West. Yeah, we kind of knew this was coming, but we also got news of a really cool special edition that I kind of want to buy. I'm trying to get uh, one of my old friends who used to play Disgaea with me back in the day to go up on it. Because uh, <laughs> it's, got, it's got a stuff printing, it's got printy coasters, it's got enamel pins, which are, they are my weakness in a big way. There's a super big art book, which, again, is something that I'm a big fan of. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. It uh, the the one drawback here is that it's a hundred bucks, so it it's not a it's not a cheap special edition. So. Hundred bucks is is pretty standard though for special editions for games. Like uh, both of Diablo ones I bought were over a hundred. Okay, so sorry. Final Fantasy fourteen one was over a hundred, I think. I'm I'm misspeaking. It is expensive for a game to buy. Is in oh, my yeah, I'm yeah. not comparing it to other special editions. I'm comparing it to the sixty dollar version well, of the game. I'm just saying, if you if you want a special edition, you gotta you gotta expect to pay like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely yeah, yeah. looking at but it the wrong way. In, uh, yeah, so. it's like a forty dollar surcharge for a couple pins. You really want that, bro? The art book actually almost makes it worth it. If it's like a nice hard bound art book, I may end up doing it just because. Which they they always are. They're all they're always so nice. Shut up! You're making oh, this worse. Oh, love it. <laughs> uh, uh, moving on. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. There's more. You... There's more. Uh, oh shoot! They are also upraising all of the art to be two sprites, whereas previously it was kind of a weird pixely version. They're also adding a new, I think, mode as well. It's called Etna mode. I think that it may have been because they've ported this before. They ported it to the DS, and I think that this mode was in the DS version. And uh, but I'm not 100 percent about that because I only played the original. And then finally, it's scheduled to release this fall. So there we go. I'm done. Oh okay. I don't need the distraction now, but anyway, I'll move on. And anyway, Dbrand is finally releasing their new and improved Switch skins. Yeah, so they first attempted to release these apparently forever ago, and but there were issues with the adhesive was like stripping paint, and apparently they it was like <laughs> it was like eating the plastic, like it was like an acid kind of situation. Yeah, I mean that's not too surprising. Have you ever like yeah, again past life? Dbrand Dbrand claims it was the UV coating was getting eaten off because there was some special UV coating on the Joy-Con and the, the adhesive was eating like through it. I mean, adhesive is very like... Said. I'm watching your fish fight behind you, by the way. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so they fixed that and they're releasing them as of the last Friday, the 20th of this month. And they're kind of cool. I don't know how much I personally am into it. Like, it's, it's kind of a... They're, they're not even real cases. They're just kind of stickers. And I don't have any idea what just happened. Um, so they're, they're more like stickers than they are anything else. So I don't know how much I personally will end up getting one. You were talking about grabbing one, though. I, so I went and looked today. You can't get to the ones that I want anymore. So like they have that little thing where you can like draw them online, mm -hmm. draw them up. I wanted carbon fiber green. And then when you look now, it's carbon fiber, period. It's just black. And you get like a matte green. Yeah, I, I looked at it right before the show and I couldn't get the, the col color combo I wanted. So, eh. I mean, they were heavily, uh, heavily responsive on Twitter. You might try that if you care at all. <laughs> I, saw, I saw them on Twitter. I think I'm okay. <laughs> they were, they were, they were I, using dirty words on Twitter and it was amazing. I, it was the funniest thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be sent home crying by D-Brand. <laughs> Thank you very much. The official Twitter account of some brand. 
I mean, that's kind of the way of Twitter brands anymore. Anyway. I actually really like dbrand. Like, I have purchased multiple times their stuff for my phone. In my experience, though, it doesn't last very long. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a huge pain to, to in, install. You got to get, like, the blow, the blow dryer out. You got to heat up the sticker because it's basically a glorified sticker. And then you got to, like, heat up just, like, a quarter-inch area, put it on. Heat up the next quarter-inch area, push that on. And just keep going until it's all the way on. And then in two weeks, it comes off because you put it in your pocket twice. It's just... Dude, that, eh. to me, speaks that you're screwing something up, though, in the process. Like, that can't be... No, there's a whole video. Like, you can't screw it up. You'd have to be beyond stupid to not be able to do it. Yeah, you so... You fight me. You all <laughs> fight me. But they, they walk you through it really nicely. It's, like, it's, a, it's a great company, and it's a decent product. Just I've just not had a lot of success with it. It may also so be... I'm hesitant to put that on my Switch. It may also be better, though, because your, your Switch is not going in your pocket. It's not getting quite as rough treatment as your phone was, so... That's but, true, and I've considered that, too, but... At the end of the day, it is just a cosmetic like sticker, basically. So, yeah. what it's worth is your mileage may vary, basically. Yeah, hundred percent. Anyway, moving on. Developers of the game, the way remastered, submitted a bug report to Reddit of all things. Yeah, that is not a typo. He did not misspeak. They literally submitted a bug report to the Nintendo Switch Reddit, which is a great place, by the way. You should check it out. Um. So when that came out, they were still pre in pre-release stages, and around two hours in, there's a boss fight, and if you don't kill that boss fight, in under two and a half minutes, your save just gets deleted. And uh, it's super hardcore. They give a whole detail of, of what happens in there, or what causes that in there, and I think I linked, I'm sure I linked that in the show notes. So it's there if you want to go read it. Um, they also talked to Nintendo about delaying the game release, but Nintendo stated that, and quote here, because of pre-orders, pushing back release would be nearly impossible. Which, yeah, exactly. I've seen pre-order games relate, like delayed. I don't really know what that means. I don't really... I'm pretty sure I have Dark Souls remastered, pre-ordered. Just, uh, you know. That's I guess of... Panic Button has a lot more pull than whoever makes the way remastered. Well, this is a game that was like featured on the, the Nindies list. It was the 8-bit, 16-bit one. Which oh, you, that's this one. That's this one. It yeah. swaps, and that's its big hook. Yeah. Air quotes. So, I mean, obviously they've got a direct line in Nintendo, but but yeah, I don't I don't know. In any case, that's there. You're welcome to try it if you uh if you can't wait for the patch to come out. They do have a strategy where it says you know jump on this platform on this stage, do this here, and then you it's just how to get through the boss as fast as possible, so that you can beat it. Step uh, one: draw the whole owl exactly yeah step one just don't suck yeah so that's there link in the show notes i think it's i just think it's funny that this is this is the response to oh gosh we have a game breaking bug we need to what can we do about this and the the answer to that question is posted on reddit i just i love how like severe that is it deletes your save what what is that that is insane yeah two and a half minutes nap that's it you're done for for life start over so That's real crazy. quick version of it. Basically what it's doing is it's storing your save in like not on the hard drive, but in the game's memory. And at two minutes, 30 seconds, the game crashes. So your game that is your mem your save that is stored in memory is then deleted. So I don't know why they're not <laughs> saving it in both places, but that's that's beyond the scope of this conversation. I yeah, it feels like a bad coding practice to me, but I, I, I couldn't actually say anyway. Anyway, let's move on. An internet download will be required for Wolfenstein 2. And you're super pleased. Mm, I need to... You know, I, I was very upset at first, but, I mean, as you're about to detail, yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah, so you found that the PC version requires 50 gigs of total hard drive space, which, that's bigger than... Dang. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. And uh, so the warning label, the warning on the label... Or the uh, so it's it's actually a warning label on the box, which is awful. I hate these. Like I understand why, and I want your thoughts on this as well. I understand why it's a warning label on the box, but it it just ruins the the box art. The box art looked cool, and then they put a big sticker on it. Not even a sticker. It's like part of the label that says "Hey, warning," which in the show notes there's a link to that. So, I mean, it should also be noted though that uh, the like uh, what was Arc Buddy said. The issue, the primary issue that these people are always going to be fighting is uh, file sizes. And so 
it, it might they might be able to get it down to a reasonable number. 50 is it's definitely not going to stay at 50. I don't know how far panic buttons going to be able to like um squish the files. I don't even I'm not even technical enough to know what they're doing or how they're doing it. But it it won't be 50 for sure. But that label placement is definitely unfortunate. It's I feel like they could have put like a paper slip in between the plastic and the box art and then you can just remove that slip you know, after you buy it, mm. I definitely, I definitely feel like it needs to be prominently placed on the box. Yeah. I just think it needs to not be permanent. Yeah. But, eh, whatever. Uh, the one so, thing, huh? Go for it. The one thing that I did, I'm not hundred percent about this is speculation on my part. The label specifically states that a memory card may be required, which to me implies that it's going to be under whatever the base like empty switch hard drive spaces, which is 30, 32 20. minus what the switch OS takes. So it's, I think that's like what 28. Yeah. So something like that. So in, in theory with the save file, that would make the game like 26, 27. Hopefully. And yeah. a cartridge. Yeah. And yeah, this is a problem and it's going to continue to be a problem. And this is just not something we're ever going to get away from. You're not going to be allowed to hoard games. They're just not going to let you. And until we I get cry some, every time yeah and until we get i, I what i want to see is eventually some kind of like just being able to hot swap out sd cards i've got I, this sounds really annoying but i've got you know my wolfenstein install is on this sd card so this one has to go in right now as i'm playing wolfenstein this has got my ukulele save so this sd card needs to go in right now kind of thing which is super cancer but i don't know how else they do this in the long term as your friend said to you, just buy just buy a micro SD card, dude. Just just buy a micro SD card. Just get a 500 gig micro SD card. People are on Twitter. People on Twitter are funny. <laughs> Alex um, Alex from Nintendo Life has one. Just just get one. And only cost him like six months of a paycheck. Nah, he got it for free. Are you kidding me? Okay, okay. But until we so here's get what that you big... do: you make a podcast <laughs> just so that you can get the 500 gig stick when it first comes out. And be like, yeah, no, we'll totally review it. Just send me, uh, send me a couple freebies. That's totally the end game here. So uh, follow the show on Twitter so that we look really good to the publishers, please. Yeah, hundred percent. I just want that card. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Limited Run Games just announced three total new games. So the first two, they announced this in two different waves. The first two were uh, Mercenary Kings and Flint Hook, which will both be having pre-order starting today, actually at noon EST, I believe. So that's been open for seven hours. And honestly, if you haven't gotten in, you probably won't. Uh, but you can buy them each for $30. They're also selling a special edition that has both of them, which will be $89. And it's also got the extra like special edition stuff, the soundtrack, the poster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this is the company that does 5,000 runs of a game. That's all you're ever going to get. They're only going to put 5,000 out. They're all individually numbered. So yeah, you probably, if you didn't do it already, you're probably out of luck. Um, Give something. me that ukulele. I want it so bad because I need my Wolfenstein 2 space now. <laughs> I'm so sad. Again, this is good. But anyway, to... yeah. what's, uh, what's game number three? Game number three is at the center of some super old controversy, and it's called Night Trap. And if you don't know what controversy I'm talking about, that's Devin, probably because... That's never going to come to a Nintendo system. Never. So, he told Congress this. That quote right there uh, is from the reveal trailer wherein chairman of Nintendo America, Howard Lincoln, is talking about the recent offensive games and states that Night Trap will never be seen in a Nintendo system. And if you don't recognize that name, it's because this is 25 years ago. This whole thing, everything, this is, this is a 25-year anniversary of this game. And, uh, I mean, the game is mostly forgettable. This just feels like a hilarious PR stunt to me. It's an old FMV game, and it stars a bunch of like cheerleader types hanging out in a mansion. And the mansion is secretly under siege by vampires, and I think there was some other stuff, like witches or whatever. And the player's goal is to watch security cameras and spring traps to save the girls. And that's the whole game. And it just... It feels like a big PR stunt to me. And it... Yeah, comically bad. I, I really don't have anything substantive to say, just that I think this is hilarious. Uh, it's very funny. There's a link to the reveal trailer in the show notes, and you should watch it just because I, I just love the juxtaposition of the head of Nintendo saying it will never happen, and then 
hey, look, we did it. To be fair, the reason that he was at in Congress was like mostly to combat uh, Mortal Kombat because it was like in the same breath as Mortal, Mortal Kombat yeah. for whatever reason. Mortal Kombat, dudes were getting their spines ripped out, which at the time was revolutionary. You say that, but Night Trap literally, like, they, they stopped production of Night Trap because of the controversy, because of how bad it was. So well, I know, for... but Night Trap is a PG game by, like, today's standards. Mortal Kombat is still a mature game by today's standards. That's fair, yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Everybody should run just... by Night Trap is all I'm saying. They were just upset that like, girls were getting captured, like, in, in nightwear, like, like pajamas. That was like the big thing. Dude, over here, his spine literally just got ripped out and now she's beating him with it. Like, that's not the same thing. But, you know, whatever. 25 years ago, life was simpler. Apparently. Anyway, we ready to move on? Yeah, move on before I get political. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Legend of Bumdo? Bumbo. Gets a trailer. B- bum- Bumbo. See, words are hard. Legend of Bumbo gets a trailer and a Switch confirmation. So this is the latest game from the Binding of Isaac guy. He did Binding of Isaac, he did Super Meat Boy, he has been teasing us endlessly about Mugenics, which is basically Tamagotchi but with cats, and it's still not a thing that actually exists. Yeah, that face, look at that face. (laughs) Right? That's all you need to tell anybody, and they love it, and they've just been trolling us with that game. Anyway, that's not important. I want that game so bad. I think this guy's a genius. I really love the games that he puts out. I really like Binding of Isaac. Super Meat Boy's not for me, but I acknowledge that it is good for what it is. Um... Anyway, it is a dungeon, dungeon exploration with Match 3 Combat, and it'll be releasing in 2019. So, I'm not super sold on the Match 3 Combat, personally. I think like Bejeweled, you know? Where you shift... That sounds awful. Yeah, so that's a that thing. That sounds legit awful. Why would you want... Who wants this? Who is this for? Uh, My mom? <laughs> your mom, if you want to get your mom into uh, Final Fantasy next. This is like the middle step between Candy Crush and Final Fantasy XV. Definitely, definitely. I'll get her into that Pocket Edition Final Fantasy. They just came out with that. Yo, I got that on my iPod and it's, iPad, and it's really cool. Anyway, um, oh, the other important thing to note about this is that the graphics are actually really cool. It everything looks like a like if you built a theater out of cardboard, and it just it looks really cool. Like, uh, I already told them we were done with Labo News. No, <laughs> this is important. <laughs> oh yeah it looks really cool trailers in the show notes go check it out on to something that actually looks cool nba playgrounds 2 in contrast to the original will release with feature party parody parody that says parody there's not, an i in there not party. feature parody <laughs> that's funny too because when i pre-read this i also read feature party and i just let it go <laughs> feature parody Wait, wait, you said this looked cool. Are you actually at all into this? I watched a trailer for it, and the trailer looked really good. I mean, these, I like these. I don't like the uh, NBA 2K games, but I like the Playgrounds games. Yeah. Yeah, I actually own the first one, and I liked it a lot. I can't get Tristan to play it with me at all. He hates it for some reason, and I just don't understand, but... He hates Chipotle. You can't trust a thing he says. Okay, but he liked the game, that like the, the super retro... Um, Oh, God, I can't think of what it was called. This is the one that was originally on like the Sega Genesis was its first release. I think it was NBA Jam. I think it's NBA Jam. Anyway, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That one. He likes that. We've played a lot of that. And then when I tried to bring him to NBA Playgrounds, he wasn't into it. So, and I was very sad. Anyway, there's a news story here that we're supposed to be talking about. Oh. It'll have feature parity, and it will currently the current plan is to release them all on the same day, which is in like, as you said, stark contrast to the original, which the Switch re- version released way later, and it was missing a bunch of features until fairly recently. Uh, I think we still don't have online two-on-two multiplayer, and people are pretty salty about that. So They kind of bungled the Switch release of the first one, so I understand why they're trying to get ahead of this. And Yeah, I don't know. But if I can't get the guy that sits on the couch and plays video games with me to play it, it doesn't matter to me. So which I'm still salty <laughs> about. I really like these games. They're fun, and I just can't get him to try it. So Anyway, on to the question of the time period. Listen. Is that really loud for you? No, that was good. Okay. Really? It's just Navi, so I'm PTSD and That's fair, yeah. Did you know that she's a fairy? Uh my fiance, who I'm <laughs> about to marry, didn't. So, you know. I feel like that. We uh... have to reevaluate everything. Yeah. Anyway, 
question of the time period. And this will be the last week we talk about this one. So if you want to get your thoughts in, now is the time to do it. Uh, so how much do you let your, do you let reviews affect your decisions for games? There we go. And our options are one, 100% designs it for me. I would not play anything that my reviewer doesn't like. Two is I have a minimum review score and anything under that gets discarded. Three is I let it guide my decision but not decide it. Four is I completely ignore reviews. And five is I listen to word of mouth, not reviews. And just as some background, this came about because I realized that I am only playing games with over a 75 on Metacritic and I think you're somewhere about in that same range and I personally feel like that's that's problematic but yeah so that's where that came from and we would love to hear your thoughts oh I should have said the link the link is bit.ly slash dsn poll 25 yeah bit.ly slash dsn poll 25 there we go now we're moving on so our next show is delayed we should have put this at the top of the show. I may put this at the top of the show. We will be recording next Wednesday because somebody is coming to the city that I live in and I don't know who that would be, so. It's you. It's, no idea. It's, is it Jasmine? Is she going? Yeah, it's, it's just her? Jasmine. Oh my God. No fiance is coming to visit me in Portland. Yeah, <laughs> that's not weird, right? That's totally normal. I feel like that's totally normal. No, it's, it's okay. We're friends. It's cool. Um, okay, cool. Anyway, moving on. That was, uh, no, why? There we go, okay. I feel better. Uh, <laughs> if you want to email the show, you can do so at desyncnerds at gmail.com. If you prefer Twitter, you can tweet at us. I am, we are at desyncnerds, D-E-S-Y-N-C-E-D-N-E-R-D-S. And you can tweet at us individually. I'm at Kulana, K-U-L-A-N-A-H, and he is at D-S-N Colin, D-S-N-C-O-L-I-N. It's right above him on the video as he so prominently displays every week. Uh, if you want to support the show, we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash desyncnerds. If you want to support the show but you can't do so monetarily, you can rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. And if you want to watch us live, you can catch us not next Monday, next Wednesday at probably 6.30 PST. Still, we will probably not be live next week because I don't actually know when we're going to do that. Um, but in the future, we record on Mondays at 6.30, 9.30 PST, EST, 2.30 AM on Tuesdays in the UK at twitch.tv slash desyncnerds and our VODs will be on YouTube. Our channel is desyncnerds. We are also finally on Discord at bit.ly slash dsndiscord. Thanks for listening, everyone. Peace.